Hello everybody and welcome back to Rainbow Crafts. My name is Colton and today I will be making for you our Loch Ness Monster inspired soap. This soap actually will be for sale in January for the Sasquatch Festival that we will be participating in, which is where it's getting its name from, the Loch Ness Monster. It's a cryptid just like Sasquatch. So if you want to see how we make this Loch Ness Monster inspired soap, stay tuned. All right, let's get this soap making started. So while I am blending our lye water and our plant-based oils together, um, I did want to share that this soap is a little bit special, and that is because we are actually working with Nature's Garden, who is where we got the Dragon's Blood fragrance oil from, and they are doing a 12 days of Christmas contest where if you make something with one of their products and tag them in a post, um, and I'll put all this in the comment section down below, you could win a $25 gift card to their site. So while we did buy all of these ingredients ourselves um, and we would have made this soap regardless, we were excited to work with them because we love their stuff. Basically it's them and Brambleberry that we get all of our fragrance oils from and some of our colorants and things like that. So definitely check out um, our Instagram post or um, I'll put the details in the description box below. But now that I am done kind of chatting about that um, and now that it is about time to add the fragrance oil, we will get out our strainer here and pour our Dragon's Blood fragrance oil, which is from Nature's Garden. And we also have some green clay in there um, I believe it's Brazilian green clay, which is why it kind of looks a little bit like um, spirulina, like algae, or something along those lines. But it just adds a nice pleasant kind of green tone. And it also adds a slight exfoliating texture, which is nice as well. The thing to note with the Dragon's Blood fragrance oil is that it does discolor the soap. It discolors it to like a light tan, so all of the colors are going to be darker than what they look like in this video, especially once everything is cured. For the design, I was wanting to use our Heritage Workshop Supply Acrylic Loaf Divider to do a new design, kind of like the Lavender Haze Soap making video, and I'll put a card up in the corner that you could click on and watch that video. So I wanted to divide the soap batter into two equal parts. One part is going to be completely uncolored and then the other part is going to be colored with some green mica. This green mica is that apple moss green from Brambleberry that we use all the time and then I did add a little bit of spinach powder in there to give it a little more of a natural kind of earthy vibe. The overall design that I was going for was like Loch Ness Monster or like Creature from the Black Lagoon a little bit and that's because this soap was actually going to be for sale in January and in January we will be doing a booth at the Sasquatch Fest um, up north from us in Washington so um, we wanted to do something kind of cryptid themed, and we thought this was the perfect, perfect opportunity. Dragon's Blood scented, so we kind of rolled with that theme. This soap batter was fairly well behaved. It was accelerating just a skosh, but not too much. You could still work with it. I probably couldn't have done any sort of cool, super intricate designs, but for this application, it was just fine. We will scrape out the containers because we do not need those anymore. We are done with them. And then kind of jiggle everything around to get it all nice and settled. And then remove those dividers and then the end pieces as well. Again, and just like the lavender haze soap that we made, I considered leaving it like this because I just, this design is really cool. So I'll definitely just have to do like a pure divided soap like this um, just to kind of quench my curiosity. I don't know why I kept walking away from the camera at that point. I might have been looking for 
my chopstick, which is actually in the apron pocket, and you can see that there. Or I could have been getting the wire hanger tool. Who knows? And then the second part of this design is I wanted to pull the soap batter horizontally across with that hanger swirl tool. Now this is where the soap batter accelerating a little bit kind of hindered my design because you could actually feel the tension between the two colors. So that uncolored soap base actually was setting up quicker than the colored soap base, which was kind of interesting. And then let's zoom in the camera. And I wanted to do kind of in the theme of Creature from the Black Lagoon, Sea Monster, um, Nessie vibes, some scales. So I was using my soap spoon and doing very low spoon swoops to kind of do like overlapping scale design. And I think this worked out really well, especially once the white uncolored soap base turns into that nice like tan color that it will turn into. It's gonna look very creature from the depths. And then we will clean up the edges with our chopstick and then spritz the top with some rubbing alcohol as well just to help prevent any soda ash especially now that it's cooler outside that's a little more prevalent at least in our experience but that's not the end of the world you can just steam the top of your soap which we do anyways and then we will flash forward to the next day and you'll see that we are in a very different location than before and that's because we actually did a soap making demonstration in conjunction with the Vancouver Farmers Market. And so we made three batches of soap and then we wanted to cut three batches of soap. And this was one of the ones that we cut. So um, to the right of the camera there, behind that blue line on the ground, we actually have a few audience members that were kind of watching and seeing how we do our thing. I did try and get people to slice the soap with Dorothy, our soap slicer there, but they were very hesitant, and I don't know if they just were nervous to mess up or what. Um, I did get one person, and I do have that on video, so I might make a video of that kind of soap demonstration in the future. And then we did have a kind of courageous volunteer, but just to smell the soap, they actually were um, the wife of one of the other makers that were um, at the event with us, but she was very, very interested in the whole process, which was fun. I will insert a picture kind of in the middle of myself and Zach there, so you can see what the bar actually looks like. Um, this camera was set up actually on a like kitchen, uh, kitchen countertop, so it was very far away. I couldn't get it any closer without having the entire camera. And then we were just kind of describing to this person the soap cutting process and what we do with the end cuts. We had a lot of questions about that um, the whole weekend and it's actually uh, because we have a really thick chunk that you can't really see but we cut those differently now so you get a little kind of like soap cube that's a little bit more of a satisfying travel sample soap size that really works great and those are what I'm cutting right now. If you do want to get this soap, it will be for sale January 1st online and in person. So check out our website to get that. Um, we do want to give a huge, huge shout out to our foamy homies and study buddies who get soaps of the month from us, discount codes and other fun perks like shout outs at the end of our videos. We are nearing the holiday season, so videos are kind of wrapping up here. Stay tuned and check out what we have coming up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and also ring the bell notification button so you get notified when new videos come out. Bye.